Today I'm going to go through a metal mix in one hour. I'm going to try to cover as much as I can. If you're interested in certain sections, check the chapters down below. It's going to be in real time, so it's going to be a long one. This video came about from a question in the comments. I read all the comments, so if you have any questions or any topics you want me to cover, just let me know down below. Some background information, I'm using ML drums. They sound pretty cool. I've been really digging it. We're gonna go with that one. For the bass, I have the Dark Glass bass plugin. So for the guitars, I have my DIs feeding to a group. And then on that group, I have the Auto Audio 1111. Been using this amp a lot, I really like it. If you're interested in getting it, I have a coupon code, check it out down below. A little kickback comes back to me. So if you like the way that this amp sounds, use the code, save 50% off, try it out. There's a trial. I love it. I've been using it a lot. So I have my DI's going straight to the auto audio, but on my DI's I have the Will Putney STL. I have the amp, cab, and EQ off, and then I'm using his pedals. And then on the left side I have the Tube Screamer 808, and then on the right side I have the TS9. Just so that my left and right are slightly different. Uh, and then for leads, I'm using the Auto Audio 1111, and then I'm also using the Josh Middleton for leads because I really like the pitch up. And since I'm using a bass six for most of the stuff I write nowadays, having the pitch up one octave is really cool. I have all of the plugins that I would use on. I've gone to the default settings or they're off if they add some sort of character or sound or compression. The only thing that I did keep was the guitar rough tones and the bass rough tones just because I could spend half an hour to an hour on like dialing in a guitar tone alone. And then yeah, we have our extras here, the crowd sounds. I'll go through what I do with my crowds to my snares and you'll see what I'm talking about. So as per usual, let's get a little timer going. I'm gonna be mixing in these headphones. They're my Audis LCD-1. I find them to be really accurate and they're better than my Yamaha HS8s and my room also isn't catered very well for this kind of stuff. I've got one hour on here. Let's begin. Here we go. So first thing I'm gonna do is basically just select all and lower the volume because it's already clipping. And then I'm just gonna start with my drums and I'll bring in the bass in a second. So here's my kick. So a lot of room, a lot of verb. I have the most of the verb going to my toms. I'm just gonna lower the ambient mics right now and go from there. So first thing I'm gonna do really is just, I like to have some sort of master going on just to, just to raise the volume a bit. Kick drum. For kick drum, I really like this basement plugin. I'm gonna try to talk as low as I can so I can get the most done. But basically I use the basement for my kick and snare to bring the low frequencies out that I want. Cool, I just want more click out of the kick. I'm just gonna basically loop this beginning part. Cool. I have my kick sound. I'm gonna go as quick as I can because I got a lot to go through. I like distressor for my I like the distressor for my kick comp. I like to go fast on the attack. I like to go slow on the attack and fast on the release. Mix that up. We're not clipping. We're good there. I'm gonna move on to the snare. Same thing here. Gotta turn the EQ on. Pre-dynamics. 
I just want a bit more brightness out of the snare. Cool, and then back to the unfiltered. For snare, I like to turn the resonant on for the basement because it cuts off from whatever the cutoff is here, but it adds as well. So I'm just gonna find whatever frequency is adding a nice amount to the low end of the snare. So now I'm cutting too much. Too much. That's pretty good. That's good. Cool, I feel like I probably don't need more low end than that. Pretty good. I'm definitely clipping. Here we go. Let's go a little lower. Compress it. Just want to get a lot enough of the snare to come out and mute some of the wires by making the release go a little bit longer. That's pretty good. Okay. That's good. I'm gonna go to my overheads. I usually start with my overheads. I messed up, but I'm not gonna start now, so. I'm gonna kinda of get rid of some of the snare and shell sound by going faster on the attack and longer on the release. That way it compresses the shells quicker. I don't want to compress it too much, I just want to get rid of some of the snare sound, basically. I want to add some brightness to the cymbals. That's pretty good. Get a little bit of that out of there. Cool. So the toms, let's go to the toms. Basically with the toms, I'm just gonna find a little loop. I'm a dumbass, didn't have the EQ on. With toms, I like to find where the attack, it sounds it seems to sound like, I can't talk. For toms, I like to find where it sounds like the stick is hitting the skin. Around there, it sounds really good to me. Get rid of whatever we don't need. That's pretty good to me. Add a low, low end. Get rid of the super lows. I want my kick to be have the most of the lows. Add a lot of brightness to them. That's cool to me. Uh, yeah, let's keep going. You get that loop back here. I feel like I want a little more brightness out of my kick. So I like the side cue for that, for adding a little extra. for right now let's go to the room mic the room mic, I like I like to squash and distort I 
to get rid of some of the low. Cool. And then I like to distort the heck out of it. So I'm going to play it with all the drums. Devil Lock. Devil Lock's my best friend for snare. Devil Lock is my best friend for room mic and snare. Sounding good to me. That's pretty good. And then sometimes I will throw a compressor on. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, compressor. And then just gate it to the snare. Sidechain, snare. Get rid of a bit of it when the snare first hits. got my reverb it's not doing much it's mostly on the toms so let me go back to the toms let's loop this little thing whoops that's probably good enough I don't want to waste too much time on that because I don't have much time That's pretty good. On the ride, I will boost it quite a bit. That's pretty good to me. Hi-hat's probably gonna need the same thing. I'm assuming it's quiet as heck. Just gonna assume. We'll see what happens. Uh, okay, let's now bring in the bass and guitar and we'll figure out volumes. Still loud as fuck. With my drum bus, I like to just throw Distressor on as fast as I can go with the release and as slow as I can go with the attack and then kind of dial it back a bit. I'm definitely clipping, I can see, so I'm just going to lower the volume of everything there. I'll let the low pass through. That's not good to me. Cool. Uh, actually, before I bring in everything else, I'm just going to start dialing in my auxiliaries. So I have a drum bus here. Basically, I'm just feeding a little bit of kick, a little bit of snare, mostly the cymbals, because that's what I want to kind of get squash on this one. That's with nothing. It's kind of just feeding to there. And then I run through a devil lock which I've also defaulted, so let's get it a little crunchy. And then I'm gonna have to lower the volume of all these. Cool, and then I have a kick decapitator, just to get distorted. You just mute everything but the drums. is on the kick and basically I'm just distorting the kick a bit to bring out some of the saturation and nuances of it and then I do the same thing with the snare but then I find whichever one I like I usually like E on kick I like E in general so I try to find what won't be on E
and I'm distorting it a lot for the snare just to bring out some of the sustain of it, I guess. And then same thing with the toms, I also have the distortion of some sort. But these ones I need to crank. channel. I liked what I had. I believe it was like that for the kick. Too much. Too much. Okay. That's sounding pretty good. And then I have a snare verb. Which is basically a fuse audio rev 140 EMT run 140 plate. And then I'm just going to bring it in a bit. I usually go a little bit quicker on the decay time. It's just to add more fatness to the snare and not as much sustain. I like this. I like the sustain sound of room mics better than reverbs. How much time do I got? Okay, we got 45 minutes left. I was expecting less than that. And then I make another bus for all of my shells, basically kick, snare, toms, as you can see, where, which number is it? It's the last one there, I believe. Yeah, shells. And it's basically, I'm sending the kick, snare, and toms to this last one, and I'm leveling the amount of kick, snare, and toms I want out of it. I want, I guess, the most snare, toms, and then least amount of kick. And I'm going through a Fuse Audio compressor, whatever the hell this is. I can't remember what it is. Let's just choose a different one. Um, I'm just gonna use the Ableton stock glue compressor because it's got some cool saturation to it. And then let me bring in the rest of the drum so I can hear what it's doing. Go a little lower. And with this one, I like to go pretty fast on the attack and pretty fast on the release just to like really clamp down on the shelves and make them more, I don't know, consistent. So it's doing a lot, but it's too loud. Okay, that's pretty good for right now. Let's bring in some bass and we'll see what we're at there. Bring in the bass and the guitar, I'll level it, and then I'm gonna start really carving the tones. The bass I will duplicate, but we'll see what happens. Sorry, I already know I want more brightness out of my snare. So I really like this Plugin Alliance indent plugin. I love it for snare. Check out this. This is my favorite. This is one of the reasons why it's my favorite. Let me go just the snare. So there's like a cutoff and then a res, like a resonance like you would have on a synth, but listen to the brightness it adds. Let me find a better spot if I can. And then I'll dial in the cutoff. And basically it's like the same thing as the basement where like wherever my cutoff is, it's boosting there and cutting from the same spot. So I don't want to cut out that much, but listen to the sizzle. Huge difference. Can't find it. There it is. You'll see when I dialed in a little bit better in a bit.
that's a lot better. It was a little too low midi there. I'll probably still mess with it more, but I just want to move on. I'm still hearing it's a bit too low midi, but I want to bring in the rest of the instruments before I make some crazy choices there. So let me bring in the bass now. Actually, let me real quick do the trick that I know I'm going to be doing with the bass. So basically, that's the bass on its own with the dark glass plugin. That's cool. I'm just going to do the typical trick, which is to take that signal, uh, duplicate it, and then have one for the low end and one for the high end. And. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna cut it off. Let's see where we should cut it off. I'm gonna meet, I'm just gonna solo it. And then I'll add some sort of compressor. And if you're finding that you're doing this and it's distorting too much, your release time isn't long enough. just smoothens it out a lot that was too much but I usually find around here for this trick is kind of the minimum I can go before it distorts good enough um, cool and then let's move to this one a lot of noise coming out of this guitar <laughs> And then now I'm going to distort it. I've been really liking the ML audio bass, the amped bass. It's really cool. I'm going to put it before the cut and then we'll see what sounds better before or after. That's with both of them. And to be honest, I don't need very much of this because I'm only really using the bass for its low end. And that's kind of it. So much so that my next move is usually to put on a Pultec UAD and boost low end even more. This is usually what I do. Let me know if this bothers you. Quite a bit of like 100 hertz or 60 go with the bandwidth a little bit more basically i'm just adding like 100 hertz and lower realistically like 200 hertz and lower and then i just compress it a bit i really like the fab filter for bass especially the opto eight to one is usually a good start What I'm going to do with this is actually turn the cab off. And sometimes I turn the cab off of the ML. It's pretty cool. It's hard to fight that. It sounds so nasty. Let's see what this sounds like before. That's cool too. Let me just flip the phase and see what's in phase. I like that better. Okay. Now I'm just going to bring in the guitars because like I said, the bass is kind of just, it's there for the low end for me. And that's kind of it. I'm going to mute the extras because, oh, they're muted. Never mind.
They're sounding pretty good already. I dialed them in. Uh, this is kind of what I did with the auto audio. Really like the snarl, feedback. The L34 seemed to work really well for this one. Cab is bypassed. And I've been using the Miko too. I kind of made my own custom. It's like that, I think it's a Sheps trick where you have two of the same mic. One's 100% straight, one's 45 degree angle basically. Just to cut out some fizz. That's my cab, sorry. It's just cutting out a little bit of fizz. I don't know if you can hear that. I can hear it. Cool, so what I have for my guitars, same trick as always. Got my main guitars. And then I have the no cab version. Which is the auto audio. Oh, I actually have to turn the cab off. Punishing. And I'm basically just like, just giving it. I'm just giving it. So now I'm just going to kind of go with the no cab and see how much impedance I want on this one. I really like the auto audio a lot in general, but like the no cab and the normal version, they blend really well together. And basically right here I have, it's called auto la it's a UAD plugin and it's basically moving the phase and the samples over just to like make sure the phase is coherent and correct. Um, if you want me to do a, a specified video on this, I can, it's just like a large topic to cover right now. Uh, but basically I'm just making it sure it's in phase instead of just flipping the phase, sometimes flipping the phase isn't enough. So you have to like flip the phase move the audio over to make sure it's like the best phase possible and that's basically what i'm doing here i'm pretty sure buster has a video on this that i've seen on like urm or something where he's just like slowly moving the guitar over until it like sounds optimal to him that's basically what i'm doing in a plugin instead of like manually moving it yep I thought so. Everything's clipping, I'm just gonna turn everything down. Guitars, everything. Including all of my auxiliaries, because they're probably way too hot too. Okay, now we're sitting better. I guess I set the phase to a different amp combo. Yeah, like listen to how much more full it sounds when I turn it on there. This is with it off. And then with it on. Just, it just, it's more phase coherent. So let's leave it. I'm just going to move on. Usually with this kind of scratchy guitar sound, I like more mid and more presence and not as much low end because I really just want to distort the hell out of it so it's consistently a wall of garbage. <laughs> and then on here, let's add our SSL.
cut a bit from the guitars because that's basically where the kick and the bass are sitting. Okay, I'm pretty happy with the guitar sound itself. And then now, if I don't have it already, I'm just gonna dial in my guitar comp. I have this as a auxiliary track. I'm sending the guitars to this and I have an 1176 active. And basically I just like to squash this and just make sure my guitars are consistent. I'm not looking for pick attack as much, but just consistency. I like to push it, like you can see how the pick attack's kind of disappearing, but I kind of like that because I'm using this one low in the mix just to make sure the notes are sustained and more audible. Like listen to how the high end kind of dies down and you're left with more of like the low mid note section. That's what I like for this. But then sometimes you can hear, if it's going too much, it clips. I don't want that. So that's good for me. Even at minus 13, it's adding one hell of a lot. So let's go with that. Same thing with the bass. I kind of do basically the exact same thing. can hear how much noise there is in that bass, it's crazy. How much time we got? Okay, we 28 minutes left. That's not bad. I thought we would have like 10. Think. Think. Cool. So now what I do, now that I've got my stuff basically set, I'm going to go into more of my mix bus mode. Um, what I love on my mix bus is Black Box, which is a plug-in alliance uh, saturator. Honestly, if you're looking to get some sort of uh, pr like subscription-based plugin thing, Plugin Alliance has so much, and every month they're just like, "Here's another plugin," and it's like they're at like 127 now or something like that. 33 bucks a month. Uh, there's three licenses, so if you want to split with a friend or two, or you want to split between different computers that you have, different options. I love it. I'm I'm not sponsored by them in any way, but I feel like I could not live without Plugin Alliance. So black box, basically I'm just gonna go th through here to my saturator just to add a little bit extra girth and whatnot. Let's go. I like to go into solo. I'm using the, uh, where are we? Black box. Hey, plug in alliance, here we go. Uh, the two, whatever the hell this is. HG2MS. It just has more options. The other one doesn't have like the option to choose your frequencies here for saturation. So I got this on. I'm just going to choose which frequencies I want to saturate in the whole mix. And I want to usually add a little low mid. I like just add the wall of strength. And then what I normally do is like one wheel up, one wheel up. I like that. I feel like it just really makes the drums stand out. It makes everything stand out. Black box is the best. So the next, 
One of my favorite plugins for like a mix bus compressor is this SPL Iron, also a Plugin Alliance one. You'll notice a lot of the plugins I use are Plugins Alliance. Plug <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, it's really cool. I usually, the reason that I set up my mix bus, this is like, everybody has their own opinion of what they should do or whatever. The reason I set it up kind of before I finalize my mix is because I usually mix into my mix bus and you'll see I really like this air bass function on the iron. It pushes both the air and the bass, obviously. But it's really sick, yeah. So this is with the air and bass off. just sounds fuller as you can obviously see but now I'm clipping so I like mixing into this one because it does some of the work that I don't want to do which is like figuring out more of the low end stuff it just adds more low end more air so I don't have to go as crazy adding it before the mix bus and then sometimes, depending on the song, hey, you're not the right one. Sometimes, depending on the song, where the hell did you go? Uh-oh. There it is. Idiot. Sometimes I'll go into mid-side. Actually, I always go into mid-side on this compressor and then compress the sides different from the center. But sometimes I'll boost the sides. Which obviously boosts the volume. I don't think I did on the final one, but maybe we will. So I'm gonna compress the middle first, which is more my kick and snare. I wanna go, same thing, kinda slow with the attack, faster with the release. And I like to go a little bit faster on the attack and slower on the release of the sides. Because it's my toms and my guitars and they don't need to be as percussive as my kick and snare. And then again, everything's a little bit loud, so... Turn everything a bit down. Grab everything, go one dB lower. Okay, let's go to my low end. I want to compress it a bit more. So I really like the Teletronics LA-2A. Any LA-2A for bass is really good. It ends up compressing it a lot without sounding compressed. Just evens it out. And then I'm just going to throw Track Spacer on, which basically side chains whatever frequency you set. For the bass, I do it to the kick drum. So when the kick drum goes off, I'm cutting all the sub. but right away. Not that much. I go usually to like 60 or 70. That way the sub from the kick drum really shines through and the gu the guitar or the bass is just kind of there. The bass is always just kind of there for me, to be honest. Definitely use a little more kick drum in general. So now I kind of before set the phasing. I'm not going to go through the phase issues on this episode. I'll go through it on another one if you want. But I just want to make sure everything's in phase. And it wasn't. I'm not going to rush through it because I've changed things so the phasing is different than the first mix I did. So let me get rid of all that. Wasted that. <laughs> and 
And then what I really like to do with the snare, just to get some extra smack out of it, there is a Sound Toys plugin called Radiator, which is a saturator. And I kind of just like really push it and use it as like it's a limiter. So I usually go one, two, three, one, two. And go as much as I need to. Too much. Guys can go up. Man, I haven't dealt with the leads yet. This is scary territory. 20 minutes left. Okay. So, in Ableton, when you open up your stock preset, or when a, when you open up your stock template and you first download the DAW. Usually they have like the first two channels are a reverb and then a, a delay. So I usually just keep it kind of like that and then just replace it with better versions of the stock plugin. So the first for the reverb, I have a Valhalla Room. For the delay, I have a Sound Toys Echo Boy Jr. on ping pong. So it's going left and right. That's the reverb. And then here's the delay. And that's like just in my template. So as soon as I open up Ableton, it's already there. So what I normally do with the leads is just get rid of whatever I don't need. And since it's a lead, I can get rid of most of the low end, most of the high end. And I kind of like to telephone it. I like this button right here on sound to on plugin alliance it kind of just auto gain so it will make it quite a bit louder but it's because the reason i like it is because it'll like i said make it quite a bit louder so when you're cutting a lot of the frequencies it boosts it for you it boosts it more than it should but it's okay i can just lower it here i'd rather my volume be like minus five than like plus six it just looks weird to me <laughs> Like realistically, none of this is being used. I can literally cut it from like 500 hertz and it sounds like I'm not cutting anything. So I might as well cut all this shit. Pardon my language. And, uh, you know, let the guitars and the bass take that frequency. Like, listen to the mud. I just don't need any of that. I'll keep that much to be, like, safe. And then I have, like, the delay stuff built into the plugin, which is sick. Josh did a really good job on this plugin. I like it a lot. For the leads, like, just... Just for safety. I have an SSL channel of some sort. For a different part of the song? Ah, there's a lead on this one. And then I forgot. I also did the same kind of thing on this one, so let's cut the frequencies we don't need. Just mud. It's all just mud. 
I'm not playing anything on the low end, on the lowest string on this track, so I don't need any of 160. That's like where my low bass sub track is starting. I feel like it's just it's way the mix in general is clearer now that I've got rid of 5k onwards and 160 below it just lets the rhythm guitars pop and your leads don't need that kind of stuff okay so the bass needs a little more magic we're missing more low end so I'm gonna just boost the bass and we'll go from there pretty good I notice in general a thing that really shaped my mixes a lot more is to just make sure that the symbols are loud enough when the symbols are quiet I get it they're fucking symbols you know they're in your ears yeah I gotta make a mark Swore at 12 minutes left. Gotta beep it over YouTube. I really like Soothe for cymbals and guitar. Basically just to get rid of like those harsh frequencies. So you can see on here, it's basically like a multi-band, but better? I don't know. I just kind of go up with the sharpness just to get rid of the frequencies that are like a problem. This is what's getting rid of. that can come out actually now that we have everything kind of set more this is the point where I do the same thing with the bass I do with the guitar I do the same thing with the guitar that I do with the bass where I cut instead of cutting when the kick goes off on the guitar I cut where the snare goes off on the guitar so I like to keep it mid side I don't know why I find I have better results when I go mid side on the attack click this button boost it and then okay I already have it set to snare but you would side chain it to your snare now we can see every time the snare goes off, it's cutting whatever frequencies we want. Usually I find like from like 500 to whatever amount, 1000, 3000, it lets the snare kind of pop a bit more. You'll see what I mean. Uh, let's go to this breakdown, sure.
My computer is not liking running OBS and having this many plugins on, but... I forget what I was doing. <laughs> I zoned out. Uh, yes, track spacer. So yeah, I'm cutting the snare over the guitars. I'm not even cutting that much, but I find like the snare pops way more. You can do this with a multi-band if you don't have this. Just make sure you sidechain whatever frequencies you want to dip when the snare goes off. Okay, I got nine minutes left, so we're close. I'm probably clipping. Another thing I like to do with the drums is kind of bring them slightly more in. Since my guitars are panned hard left and right, uh, on Ableton, I usually mix in Pro Tools, but for YouTube stuff, I just do Ableton because it's easier for me. On Ableton, the only way to really bring them in is to go into Audio Effects, go to Utility, and then it's a utility, and I just bring the width in by like either 80% or 90%. So then on this lead guitar, I had Pan Man on. I'm compressing way too much. Okay, now I'm just gonna put in the extras. Uh, basically the extra is bass drop, and then I do some like crowd stuff. Every time the snare goes off in the beginning section, there's like an audience. And then I also do the same kind of thing. There's another track with crowds. This is what it sounds like. But then I also sidechain gate it to the snare so that every time the snare goes off, we have an audience. And it just makes the snare huge. Bring Me does it, The Beatles does it. I do it. I'm going to lower that one and just keep the one that's only happened there. Cool. And then let me real quick in the last couple of minutes, six minutes, get like the whole tape machine thingy. This little tape solo. I can't remember what I did. Oh, luckily I kept the tracks. I did some weird stuff. So basically I have an Alter Boy, which is an amazing plugin. And I'm dropping it down by five semitones. Then I have Fab filter, oh sorry, Sound Toys, Effect Rack. I just went through the presets until I found Phase Wah. And then, yeah, same thing as the leads, there's just so much like noise.
same thing. I just brought it in widthwise using the utility plugin. Let me see where we're at. Let me find a part with toms because I haven't really dialed them in yet. Yeah, they're not loud enough. I like toms to be really loud, to be honest. Kinda of sounds like they were out of phase. A little girthier. And same thing with the guitars, I go soothe just to cut the gross frequencies. And where are we at? I like this, I really like this one, it's guitar and then it's de-digitalized software amp. And then the mix knob, the only thing I notice is that the mix knob is like at 65% and the volume's adding a lot. And then I hear one frequency that's bothering me. I hope I can get rid of that and... Yeah, I got three minutes left, okay. real version I boosted the bass Okay what Two minutes left. I feel like I forgot something. In the last two minutes. And then a little small sidechain filter. Mono. I like to do the mono maker. I like to put like say 66 hertz or so or whatever around 70. Just to make the low end in the middle. Peter is not liking this. I apologize.
automate this lead down a little bit. I feel like in the final version I also... Yeah. Uh, where's the punk section? I know in the final version I... That's the alarm. All right, that was the alarm. We've now hit an hour. That's how I would go from scratch on a mix. I feel like it sounds pretty good for only an hour. Um, my apologies for like my computer being a little strange with OBS running. Usually I don't have those issues. I didn't have time, but normally around this time I would switch to different speakers. So let's just see real quick reference wise. I didn't have the chance to really go through here and normally I would cut out a little bit of these low mids. a little 200 hertz on the bass. Since I'm only really using it for the low end. Push a little of that. So I unfortunately didn't get the chance to go through and automate parts. I can hear just A being through different sections that the rhythm guitars are going between like being too loud and being a little bit too quiet or being the right volume. I would probably automate. I'm just going to real quick automate this down. Just a bit. I'm just going to real quick export this because as you can hear, my computer is kind of glitching out and I just want to see and play through what the mix sounds like at this point. Cool. Went a little bit over an hour, but it is what it is. I'm just going to play through the whole song and we'll see where we're at. So it's in pretty good shape for being only an hour for the mix. At this point, I would start to take it 
to my car and just see what it sounds like in my car since I know what it sounds like. Listen on all the speakers I have, like the Yamaha HS8s. I use it on my iLouds and use uh, my Audio Technica ATM, what is it? ATHM 50X just to see what it sounds like on all these different platforms and all these different headphones and speakers. And then at that point, I start making tweaks if I'm starting to notice that on all of my speakers, the low end is too much or the guitars are too quiet or whatever it is. And then I would go through and I would automate all the things that I need to, like the guitars are, the rhythm guitars are loud at one point, quiet at another one. I'd go through that. I would probably go through later and like dial in a little bit more of an EQ on the guitars. But for right now, for an hour, I feel like that sounds quite good. So thank you so much for watching. If there's any topics you would like me to elaborate in future videos, let me know down in the comments below. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. See ya.